which is the North Pole and at the bottom you see Ket 1 which is the South Pole and then we have Ket plus and Ket minus for equator x-axis and negative x-axis. Hello and welcome to this video on quantum computing with R. So today we are diving into one of the most fascinating concepts in quantum mechanics called superposition. We will explore what it means, why it is important and also how can we visualize this using R code. Whether you are a programmer, have interest in science or just curious about quantum computing, stick around because we are going to make this both fun and understandable. So let's get started. So first, let's set the stage. Quantum computing is a cutting edge field that uses principles of quantum mechanics to process information in ways that classical computers cannot. In a classical computer, like the one you are probably watching this on, information is stored in bits, which are either 0 or 1. But in quantum computing, we use quantum bits, also called qubits. And these qubits have some mind-blowing properties. And one of these properties is superposition, and that's what we are focusing on today. So what is a qubit? Unlike a classical bit that is either 0 or 1, a qubit can be in a state that's a mix of 0 and 1 at the same time. So this ability to exist in multiple states simultaneously is called superposition. And this is one of the superpowers that makes quantum computers so powerful. So to understand superposition more clearly, Imagine a spinning coin when it's in the air it's not just heads or just tails it's kind of both until it lands. Similarly a qubit in a superposition isn't committed to being 0 or 1 until we measure it. Once we do it lands on one state or the other. So it is this flexibility that lets quantum computers explore many possibilities at once. Now let's get a bit technical, but do not worry, we'll try to keep it simple. So a qubit state can be written mathematically as alpha ket 0 plus beta ket 1. In quantum mechanics where you have this straight line 0 and greater than symbol that represents a ket vector or a state vector and it describes quantum system in its ground state. So 0 represents state where the qubit is in 0 state while 1 represents the state where the qubit is in 1 state. Also 0 is usually referred to as the ground state or the initial state of a quantum system. So these 0 and 1 are the basic states just like heads and tails and alpha and beta are the numbers specifically they are actually complex numbers and it tells us how much of each state is in the mix. Note that they follow a rule that the square of their magnitudes must add up to 1, which means that if you take absolute value of alpha, square it, plus absolute value of beta, square it, then that should give you 1. So these squares basically represent probabilities that we are going to soon visualize. When we measure a qubit, it collapses to either ket 0 with the probability of absolute alpha square or ket 1 with the probability of absolute beta square. For example, if alpha and beta are both 1 divided by square root of 2, the qubit has 50% chance of being 0 and 50% chance of being 1. So let's see this in action with R. So first we'll create a simple bar plot in R to show these measurement probabilities. Now suppose our qubit is in such a state that both alpha and beta are 1 divided by square root of 2. So what we'll do is we'll make use of a library called ggplot2 and then we'll specify alpha and beta 
in the third window you can see the actual values now let's say p0 represents probability for state 0 and it is absolute value of alpha whole square so basically it comes to 0.5 and p1 also 0.5 so these are amplitudes and these are probabilities so let's create a data frame df using function data dot frame and then we specify these two states so within quotes get 0 get 1 so that will be one column and then the probability so probabilities are stored in p0 and p1 so this is a small table you can see two by two two observations two variables you have the states and the probabilities using function ggplot we can use our data frame df and aesthetics on the x-axis we specify state and y-axis will have the probability values we add a layer and specify the geometric shape to be bar for bar plot so I'm going to use stat equals identity and because we'll get two bars I'm going to use maybe blue and red we can limit y values to 0 and 1 give a title measurement probabilities for x label you can call it qubit state and the final layer so label for y axis so when you run this code you will see a bar plot with two bars each at 0 0.5 showing that this qubit is perfectly balanced between 0 and 1 so this is very cool right but note that superposition is more than just probabilities because it also involves something called phases so that brings us to our next visualization called blotch sphere so to fully capture qubit's state including its phases we use visualization called blotch sphere so you can visualize a 3d sphere where the north pole is ket 0 and south pole is ket 1 and points on the equator represent superpositions with equal probabilities like our example but with different phases that affect how qubits interfere with each other so this blot sphere is the ultimate way to visualize a qubit so let's plot this in r so for this we need a library called plotly in case you don't have this library obviously you have to install it first so there are multiple ways of doing that you can go to packages install and then type plotly and then hit install after that you need to run this library line and then this package will be available so i'm going to create this object called theta and store within this some sequence of numbers using function seq going from 0 to 2 times pi value for length dot out i'm going to say 100 we run this and you can see here theta has 100 values from 0 to 2 times pi now 2 times pi if you run this part it is about 6.28 we do a similar thing for phi so let me copy this paste it here the only thing is instead of 2 pi we'll use just pi so just like theta now phi also has 100 values but this is between 0 and pi now we'll create grid for the sphere so using this format expand dot grid equals theta that we just now created and phi equals phi that we just now created so now we have this grid note that because we had 100 values for each theta and phi so 100 times 100 is 10,000 now let's get values for x y z so in x I'm going to store sign of grid dollar phi times cos of so run this and x has 10,000 values so let's copy and paste and store in y so we need sign of grid dollar phi and sign of grid dollar theta so this changes to sign similarly for z so now the points for our sphere are ready 
Now let's uh, initialize the plot. So I'm going to store everything in figure fig and we'll use plotly and then connect this to the next line using percentage greater than percentage symbol which we call in our pipe. So if you are using Mac, you can use Command, Shift and M as a shortcut. Hit Enter. And now we are going to add the sphere. So add trace where X equals X, Y equal Y, Z equal Z. And then for type, we can say within quotes, scatter 3D. We want to have markers and then a comma here, hit enter and for marker we are providing a list with size equal 1, color equal gray and opacity let's keep it low so that our plot is transparent, so only 10% and then we go to the end of the line and again add that pipe symbol, command shift M, hit enter, go down and now we want to add X, Y and Z axis. And then again, just like the earlier one, we can say type is scatter 3D. And for mode, let's use lines. Let me take this down and then, and after comma for line, we can have a list. So for width, let's use four, slightly thicker. And then go to the end of the line and add this pipe symbol. So this was X. And I'm going to copy this and then we can modify this here paste. So for x we can say 0, 0 and because this is for y we can say 0, 1. Let's copy this and paste it again where we have 0, 0 for x and y and this time for z we have 1. We don't need this at the end. So let's run this and make sure we don't get any errors. So it runs fine. Now let's define common qubit states. So for that, I'm going to create this object states and store within that a list. And basically we are going to have four. So let me hit enter and go down, choose list. So name will be equal to within quotes, get zero comma, theta is zero and phi is zero. So this is going to be the north pole of the sphere. And we put a comma at the end, hit enter. So this line is for South Pole, this line is for Equator, X axis. So Theta this time is going to be Pi by 2 and Phi will be 0. And the last line will be for Equator with minus X axis. So Theta is going to be Pi by 2 and Phi this time is going to be Pi. So we have defined uh, these four states we can run. We don't get any error, that means we don't have any typo here. So next I'm going to add state vectors and labels. And for this we'll use a loop. So we can start the loop with for state in states. So these states that we created just now. And then you start with the open curly bracket, hit enter. So we can say theta will be state dollar sign theta. Similarly phi will be state dollar sign phi, hit enter. And then we specify x, y, z values. So x is going to be sine theta times cos phi. Hit enter. And then the figure that we had created, fig, will be updated in this line. We connect this to next line, hit enter and say add underscore trace. x equals c, 0x y equals c 0 comma y and z equals c 0 comma z comma here hit enter and as we had done earlier type is equal to within quotes scatter 3d mode equals lines within quotes comma enter and for line we can have a list color equal within quotes black and width will keep 4 and then we connect this to next line using the pipe symbol. Again, add underscore trace.
and it ends with this curly bracket. So this is our loop. Let's run this. We don't get any error, so everything is fine. We are still preparing this uh, blotch sphere. So let's specify layout. So we can set layout for cube shaped view. And for that, I'm going to modify figure and store that in figure and then say layout. So we should have this symbol in between. For layout, we are going to say scene equal and then we provide a list aspect mode within quotes cube and then we have a comma hit enter we go down x axis list and then we provide range negative 1 to 1 this will set the layout for a cube shaped view i'm going to run this and we don't have any error everything is fine so now we can plot fig so this is what we get. So this code basically creates a semi-transparent sphere using spherical coordinates. So you can see in the plot, it plots uh, four states. At the top you have ket 0, which is the north pole. And at the bottom you see ket 1, which is the south pole. And then we have ket plus and ket minus for equator x-axis and negative x-axis. You can make it small, you can make it big, you can rotate the sphere. So in this plot basically you are seeing ket 0 and ket 1 states at the poles while ket plus and ket minus are superpositions on the equator. Both ket plus and ket minus have 50% chance of being in state 0 or state 1, of course when measured, just like what we saw in our bar plot. But the key thing is that they differ in their phases and that's why they are different points on the sphere. So this phase information is uh, very critical for quantum algorithms, but again that's another story for another video. So superposition is what lets qubits be more than just zeros or ones. It is the foundation of quantum computing's power. And by visualizing it with tools like bar plots and blot sphere, we can start to grasp or understand these strange quantum states. In this video, we have used uh, R programming to bring these concepts to life, making quantum computing a bit less mysterious. Now, if you are new to our programming, I would highly recommend you can go to YouTube and look for at BK Rai. And there's a playlist that I have created basically for anybody getting started with R. So R for absolute bigness. These are like short videos you can practice and get familiar with how this R programming works. So that's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, dive into quantum superposition with R. Please give this video a thumbs up. You can subscribe for more. And let me know in the comments what quantum topic you would like to see next. So thanks for watching. I will see you soon.